Hi, this is Edwin 11 class, episode 3. Now, before we proceed with the focus of our discussion for today, let me share to you some situations that will probably remind you of your childhood experiences. Of course, it has something to do with our discussion. Okay, without further ado, here is situation number one. It's a conversation between a child and his nanay. Bata, Mama, tanungin mo ako kung bakit may day and night. Alam ko ang sagot. O nanay, o sige, bakit anak? Bata, kasi pag day, gising si Mr. Sun. Pag night naman, tulog siya. Situation number two. It's Christmas and Uncle Bob is giving gift to children. Three-year-old Karen did not want a 100 peso bill and instead preferred to receive five 20 peso bills. Her 10-year-old cousins were telling her it's better to get the 100 peso bill, but they failed to convince her. Karen insists that she has more money than her cousins. Hmm? Situation number three. Still, it's a conversation between a child and her mother. Nanay, kinakarga ang baby ng kapit. Alright, if you can notice class, the situations that I have just shared to you have something to do with how children understand their own experiences. And of course, class, with this, it has something to do with another development theory. This development theory class was introduced by John P.J. And for 60 years, he conducted research on cognitive development. Hence, his theory is cognitive development theory. Of course, when we say cognitive, it has something to do with our intellect, how we understand analyze and synthesis and of course how we apply the knowledge that we gain his research method involves observing a small number of individuals specifically individuals different in age class as they are responded to cognitive tasks that he designed so these cognitive tasks were later known as pj shan tasks P.J. called his general theoretical framework genetic epistemology because it has something to do with how knowledge developed in human organisms. From this, P.J. came up with stages of cognitive development which would be discussed later on. Right. However, before proceeding to the stages, there are basic cognitive concepts we need to remember. So there are four, the schema or schemata, Assimilation, accommodation, and equilibration. When we say schema, they refer to the cognitive structure by which an individual intellectually adapts and organizes his environment. In short, this is an individual's way to understand or create meaning about a thing or experience. For example, class, can you still remember the first time you saw a dog? Hmm? So, um, probably your first schema of a dog went like this. A dog is small, has four legs, very furry, pointed ears, and say, arf, arf, or wow, wow. So, don't m misunderstand me, class. Of course, schema do not refer only to first-time experiences, but more importantly, to everything that we experience. So say, for example... No, um, the first time or the moments that you had fun in the past. No, the first time you rode a Ferris wheel, the first time you had um a travel with your friends. No, so of course everything. No, every description that you came up with out from those experiences are called. Schema. Assimilation. This is the process of fitting in a new experience into an existing or previously created cognitive structure or schema. For example, in your module are indicated there, after your first experience with a dog, you and your mother went to the playground the next day. You saw another animal and realized that it was quite similar with the one you saw yesterday. 
However, it was bigger and had thinner fur. You ask your mom what it was and you learn that it was another type of dog. So with, the, with that experience class, nadagdagan yung schema mo or yung understanding mo about dogs. So that is the process of assimilation. Third, we have accommodation. This is the process of creating new schema. Why do we need to create new schema? Simply because class, our experiences differ from one another and because we don't see the similarities um, between in or among our experiences, that's why we tend to create new schema. So, for example, class, no? The next day, you and your mother went to the playground again and saw another animal. Like the other two, it had four legs, small and furry, but you were amazed by its new features. It had whiskers and instead of saying arf arf or wow wow, it said meow meow. You told your mom it was a funny dog. However, she told you it was not a dog but an animal called cat. So, from this class, we can understand that, of course, accommodation, since the experience, the new experience, is not the same with his or her previous experience. So, ibig sabihin, gumago ka na ng bago mong schema about this new experience. And this is accommodation. Lastly, we have equilibration. PJ believed that the people have the natural need to understand how the world works and to find order, structure, and predictability in their life. Equilibration is achieving proper balance between assimilation and accommodation. When our experiences do not match with our schemata or cognitive structure, we experience cognitive disequilibrium. Specifically, class, we experience cognitive disequilibrium when we are confused, when we don't understand things, that's why we ask. And because of this imbalance, class, we seek answers or we seek ways in order for us to maintain the balance. Alright? So, for example, have you ever felt like hindi mo talaga naintindihan yung discussion ng teacher mo? Diba? So, hindi ka mapakali. Right? So, because of this, you tend to ask questions sa teacher mo or sa classmates mo. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng ganitong concept? Paano ba isolve itong mathematical problem na ito? Bakit ka naghahanap ng answer? It's because class, you are currently experiencing cognitive disequilibrium. That's why you want, uh, you want to maintain the balance. No, You want to achieve equilibration. According to PJ, we always do this four basic cognitive concepts in every stage of cognitive development. Now, let's proceed to stage one or the sensory motor stage. This goes from infancy to birth. Now, one developmental task that we have for the child in this stage is, of course, the child is totally reliant or dependent with the adults or the people around him. He cannot do things all by himself. He cannot feed himself. He cannot even change his clothes. Now, the child is just beginning to explore the world, to understand the things around him. The child is even familiarizing his own body. Now, in understanding these primary experiences class, the child uses his senses and muscle movements. No? So, when you say senses, there are five senses inherent in us. We have the sense of sight, the sense of hearing, the sense of smell, the sense of touch, and the sense of taste. Also, the child is initially reflexive in this stage. When you say reflexive class, an automatic response is inherent in that child so long as stimulations are provided in the environment. Example class, grasping. No? So, Kung ano yung naaabot ng butter, kung ano yung naaabot ng kamay niya, um, hinahawakan niya talaga yan. Sucking, no? Kung ano yung ipapasok mo sa bibig niya, automatic, um, sinisip-sip niya yan. And also class, reaching. Now, according to John P.J., in working with children in sensory motor stage, since the child is initially reflexive or, yeah, Teachers should aim to provide a rich and stimulating environment with appropriate objects to play with. 
Um, there is what we call class object permanence. When you say object permanence, this is the ability of the child to know that an object still exists even when out of sight. So, this is the ability that the child learns to acquire no, during the sensory motor stage. Ibig sabihin class, the child begins to understand that even if his mother, for example, is not um, around, even if he's feeding bottle, no, he's not around, he cannot see it, it's out of sight, he understands that it still exists. And when he calls for it, when he needs it, um, mag a sa harapan niya. Now, the child class is not forever reliant with the adults around him. Time probably comes that he learns to do things his own way. And the start of this class is stage 2 or the pre-operational stage, which begins from 2 years of age until 7 years of age. According to John PJ, this refers to preschool years and intelligence at this stage is intuitive in nature. When you say intuitive, this is the stage where the child begins to ask lots of question, no? Bakit my sun? Bakit my moon? Bakit my fish? Bakit ganyan yung pagkaayos? Bakit hindi ganito? So, bakit, bakit, bakit? So, this is the favorite question of the child. And according to John PJ, in order to enhance the intelligence of the child class, as the primary caregiver, you need to address those questions no matter how ridiculous they seem are. No? The child can now make mental representations and is able to pretend. The child is now ever closer to the use of symbols. Hence, the symbolic function. Symbolic function class is the ability to represent objects and events. Of course, when you say symbol, it is a thing that represents something else. So, it could be a drawing, a written word, or a spoken word. No? And then, that come to represent a real object, like say for example, a real airplane. So for example, class, um, at around 4 years of age, Nico may, after pretending to drink from an empty glass, turn the glass into a rocket ship or a telephone. I know, class, that you also witness those kinds of um, moments, no, sa mga kapatid ninyo, or if you can still remember, yung mga own experiences ninyo. Another example class, when the child tend to assign terms sa mga behavior, say for example, instead of saying kain or eating, the child would say am am. No? So, instead of saying napupunta siya CR or magsa CR siya, the child would say uu. Right? So, these are another manifestations of symbolic function. Next, we have egocentrism. Egocentrism class is the tendency of the child to only see his point of view and to assume that everyone also has the same point of view. The child cannot take perspective of others. The child class um, is still on the process of developing empathy. So when you say empathy class, this is our ability to take the shoes of other people, to see the situations of other people using their own eyes. For example, class, a three-year-old who cannot understand why her cousins call her daddy uncle and not daddy. So, another example class is yung situation number three na share ko sa inyo kanina before tayo um, nag-proceed sa formal discussion. So, egocentrism in class. Next, we have centration. Actually, class, I also have my personal experience dito sa centration. Um, my dad used to give us um, ice cream before kami dalawa ng kapatid ko and para iwas away, bumibili talaga siya ng exact the same size and exact the same flavor. However, this, there was one time class na naubusan. So, yung nangyari, even though na pareha sila na um, 100 ml, no, or in, hindi ko na matandaan class kung ano yung um, exact volume ng ice cream na yun, basta magkapareha lang, Pero, nagkaiba doon sa um, container. Yung isa, mas mataas yung height, pero narrower. Yung isa naman class is, mas mababa yung height ng container, however, wider. 
Now, of course, um, napunta sa akin yung um, mas mababa. Nap- kasi nauna yung kapatid ko doon sa ano, mas mataas na container. So, yung nangyari, grabe yung away namin. No? Grabe yung away namin because um, I assumed that yung akin mas maliit, mas konti kaysa sa, kaysa sa kapatid ko. So, I was not able to see the other feature class of the container, specifically the volume. Yung nakikita ko lang is yung height. Eh, mas mataas yung sa kanya. Sa akin, mas mababa. So, expected talaga na ano, na mas, um, mas marami yung laman nung sa kanya kaysa sa akin. So, that's how I saw it before. But of course, later on, I learned, no? So, this is centration. You only focus on one feature of the objects around you, tending to not see other features. Next class, we have irreversibility. This is the inability of the child to reverse his or her thinking. He or she can understand that 2 plus 3 is 5, but cannot understand that 5 minus 3 is 2. No? Another example class. Um, this is a scenario where a teacher asks a kindergarten uh, student. Ang sabi ng teacher class, uh, Meron ka bang kapatid, Joanna? Sabi ni Joanna, Yes, teacher. Mm. Ano, ang, uh, ano, ang kapatid, ano ang pangalan ng kapatid mo? Ang sabi niya, Isa. Ah, okay. Isa pala. No? So, si Isa, may sister ba siya? And, of course, yung bata na tinunong niya, nagloading. Hindi niya nag-gets. But the answer doon, of course, Isa has a sister. And yung sister niya is yung bata mismo na tinanong ng teacher who happens to be Joanna. Right? So, hindi pa kaya ng bata na i-reverse yung thinking niya. Next class, we have animism. Animism is the tendency of the child to attribute human-like traits or characteristics to inanimate objects. No? So, for example, yung situation number one kanina. Ano ang sabi ng bata? Ang sabi ng bata, kapag day, gising si Mr. Sun. Kapag night naman, tulog siya. So, is it possible na nagigising at tutulog yung sun? No, it's not. No? So, another example class. Uh, when the child plays, for example, yung, anong tawag dito? Uh, Barbie doll. Diba ang usually pinapangalanan nila yung Barbie doll? At sinasabi niya na, Mommy, ang sabi ni Barbie doll, gutom na daw siya. No? So, that is another manifestation of animism. From preschool years, the child then proceeds to elementary school years. Thus, the concrete operational stage. This is characterized by the child's ability to think logically but only in terms of Concrete objects. Concrete objects pertain to those things that can be readily perceived by our senses. That's why, if you can still remember, when we were still in elementary class, our teachers tend to use lots of colorful instructional materials. Ang dami-daming pictures. Ang dami-daming mga models. Mga images. Because elementary teachers concede that in order for the lessons to be easily understood, by pupils, kailangan na um, IMs address several senses of the pupil. So, hindi effective and efficient class yung mga instructional materials na ginagamit ng mga college students. Hindi siya effective for elementary pupils. That's why kayo, you are going to be um, teachers no, na magahandle ng mga elementary pupils. That's why you need to understand this concept. Now, here are the abilities or tendencies acquired by the child during this stage. The first one is the centering. This is the ability of the child to perceive the different features of objects and situations. That's why if during pre-operational stage class, pwede mo pang lokohin yung bata na mas marami yung ice cream mo or ice cream mo compares ice cream niya, in this time class, you cannot um, deceive the child na because the child can see multiple features of objects na. Even though, 
even though that your glass is taller than mine, it doesn't mean na mas marami yung laman ng sayo. No? Kasi, pwede naman na hindi magkaparaha yung height, pero the same ng volume. Next, we have um, reversibility. Manifested in the child's ability to follow that certain operations can be done in reverse. For example, the child now understands that the reverse of addition is subtraction and the reverse of multiplication is division. Third, we have conservation. Ability to know that certain properties of objects like number, mass, volume, or area do not change even if there is a change in appearance. The child knows that kapag yung eyes natunaw, it's water, and if the water is put inside the freezer, magiging eyes siya. So, the child understands na kahit nagbago yung physical feature ng tubig, tubig pa rin yun. Di ba no? The same thing is true class sa clay. Even if, say for example, yung clay nagbabago yung shape niya, it doesn't mean na hindi mo siya maibalik doon sa shape na gusto mo. No? So, pwede pa rin. Kasi, nandoon pa rin yung malleability ng clay. Right? Lastly, we have serration. This is the ability to order or arrange things in series based on one dimension, such as weight, volume, or size. So, say for example, if I am a teacher, I would let the child, okay, children, arrange these objects according to height. Arrange them according to color. Arrange them from um, the tallest, no? To the shortest. So, the child can now categorize things based on identifying features. And this is what we call serration. We are now in the last stage of cognitive development, which PJ termed formal operational stage. Begins from 12 to 15 years old. In this stage, thinking becomes more logical. An individual can now solve abstract problems and can hypothesize. When you say abstract class, it is the opposite of concrete. So even if concrete examples, concrete objects are not presented actually to the child, the child can answer, can solve problems using his or her own imagination alone. Now these are the identifying tendencies or abilities of the child in this stage. The first one we have, hypothetical reasoning. This is the ability to come up with different hypotheses about a problem and to gather and weigh data in order to make a final decision or judgment. This can be done in the absence of concrete objects. The individual can now deal with what-if questions. No? Say for example, um, if the teacher if the teacher presents um two plants, the first plant class is healthier compared to the second one. So the teacher might ask, for example, to the students that why is it no why is it the first plant is healthier compared to the second plant? Of course, the students can hypothesize and okay yung reason, no? So, pwede na silang um, magbigay ng mga several hypothesis class based or using their own logical thinking. Next, we have analogical reasoning. This is the ability to perceive the relationship in one instance and then use the relationship to narrow down possible answers in another similar situation or problem. An individual in this stage can now make an analogy. So, I indicated in your module, no, this example. If United Kingdom is to Europe, then Philippines is to blank. So if you know the answer, then you are capable of analogical thinking. But if you don't know, then um, that is something to be pondered upon. Lastly, we have deductive reasoning. This is the ability class to think logically by applying a general rule to a particular instance of situation. For example, all countries near the North Pole have a cold temperature. Greenland is near the North Pole. Therefore, Greenland has a cold temperature. No? 
Class, finally, tapos na tayo doon sa stages of cognitive development. Now, um, let's identify the uh, principles, no? principles of PJ from these stages. So, there are four principles class that PJ um, formulated. The first one, children will provide different explanations of reality at different stages of cognitive development. Yes, that's true. That's why we have these um, experiences class na kung saan sinasabi natin, Hala, noong bata pa ako, akala ko ganito. Yun pala hindi. Hala, noong bata pa ako, um, akala ko na yung moon sumusunod sa akin. But later on, when I entered high school, meron pala na siyang scientific explanation. no? So, these um, experiences class, no, um, signify our different explanations as we grow, uh, different explanations as we um, jump from one stage to another or as we proceed to one stage to another next cognitive development is facilitated by providing activities or situations that engage learners and require adaptation yes it's very important class na merong talaga tayong um tao na guides atin in every stage so that um guided or facilitated din yung acquisition natin ng learning next class we have Learning materials and activities should involve the appropriate level of motor or mental operation for a child of given age. Yes, class, appropriateness is very important. Okay? As teachers, you need to know what are those appropriate instructional materials for a certain um, stage. Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, hindi appropriate, hindi magiging effective yung mga instructional materials ng isang college student para doon sa elementary pupils. Expected, of course, na yung elementary pupils, hindi niya talaga magigets yung lesson. No? And of course, um, in the other way around class, the college students also, siguro, um, they, would, they would find it boring they would find it ridiculous if ikaw na teacher, yung tato mo sa kanila is para ding mga elementary peoples. No? Lastly, use teaching methods that actively involve students and present challenges. Yes. No? Para ma-feel ng estudyante that they belong to the class, you need to give active participation. No? Require them to move. Require them to talk. Require them to demonstrate a skill. So, do not do all the talking. Do not do all the lectures. So, make it experiential for your pupils. And more importantly, present challenges. No, Do not make the lesson too difficult for the pupils. Do not, it make, do not make it too easy as well. So, kailangan sakto lang. Kapag nagpa-present ka ng lesson, it should be um, thrilling. Kailangan may excitement. Hindi yung tipo na boring. Kasi kapag boring class, nawawala na ng interest yung mga bata. Alright? So, I hope that this lesson is clear to you. And I hope class that you gain something from the cognitive development theory. Thank you very much class. See you again.